This weekend we're going to try something a little bit different. Have you ever tried to take pictures of space? If so, you know how difficult it can be. You have to use long exposures in order to capture the light from the stars, and if your camera's not tracking the sky, then you end up with smears of light. In this weekend project by Gary Saronic, we'll be building a hinged sky tracker to track the stars with the movement of the Earth. In order to build this project, you'll need these parts and tools. You can use a prototype board to make things tidy, but there are so few parts that you could just solder them to each other as shown in the schematic. Just make sure you heat shrink any bare wires to prevent short circuits. Solder the two conductor cable to the RCA plug and connect it to your circuit where the schematic indicates the DC motor will be. This lets you easily unplug the electronics when you need to. You'll connect the motor and RCA socket later. It might be tempting to substitute a regular 500 ohm potentiometer for the one specified, but you'll need the precision of the multi-turn potentiometer. The regulator circuit is housed in a project box. You can use something store-bought, but we're using one from laser-cut plywood. You'll need to drill three holes in it. One for the power switch, another for the wire that connects the electronics to the motor via a standard RCA jack, and a third hole to access the potentiometer adjustment. Carefully position the pot so that its adjustment screw is accessible through the hole you drilled and glue the part in place. For the mount to track accurately, the drive rod needs to be curved into an arc with a radius of 7 inches. It's difficult to evenly bend a short length of threaded rod, so start with a piece that's at least 12 inches long. Use a compass to draw the required arc on a piece of paper taped to a flat surface. Then place the threaded rod onto the paper and gradually bend it until the curve in the rod matches the one drawn on the paper. Finally, use a hacksaw to cut out a 4 to 5 inch section from the rod. A segment of this length will give you around an hour and a half of uninterrupted tracking. You'll need to drill a few holes in the lower half of the hinge. Begin with the most important one, a 3 8 inch hole for the motor shaft. Position it 1 and a quarter inches from the center of the hole that the curved rod passes through. Then, drill and tap a pair of holes for mounting the motor. The hinge tracker will sit on a standard photographic tripod, so you'll need to drill and tap a quarter 20 hole centered roughly 1 and a quarter inches from the hinge pin edge. Cut a 4 inch length from a piece of 1 and a half inch hardwood stock. Then lay the screw threads of the hanger bolt across it and cut it in half at a 45 degree angle just beyond the end of the bolt. This piece will become the mounting block and you can throw the other one away. Screw a quarter 20 hanger bolt into the flat top end of the block, then use epoxy to glue the angled end of the top half of the hinge, centered roughly two and a half inches from the pin edge. A key part of the drive assembly is a nut that couples a large gear to the threaded rod. Use a blind well nut for this purpose. Prepare the gear by inserting the blind well nut and trimming off its rubber flange. You may need to enlarge the hole in the gear slightly with a round file for a good, tight friction fit. Now, connect the motor leads to the RCA jack. The motor needs to turn counterclockwise if you're in the northern hemisphere, or clockwise if you're in the southern hemisphere, so you may need to reverse the polarity of the motor leads to get the motor to turn the correct way. If the motor runs the wrong way, the tracking platform is literally worse than useless, so make sure you get that part right. Attach the socket to the angle bracket and mount on the hinge. Now it's time to put it all together. Mount the motor on the hinge and fit it with the small gear. Attach the threaded rod segment to the last hole on the top half of the hinge using a pair of nuts and washers. You may want to use a brass acorn nut on top just to make it look a bit nicer. The threaded rod should pass through the corresponding hole on the bottom half of the hinge without binding. Next thread on the large gear. When the hinge is closed, it should mesh with the motor gear. You may need to add a Teflon washer beneath the large gear to better align your gears. Your alignment may vary. Now the hinge tracker is complete. Before attempting your first photograph, you have to adjust the motor speed so that the large gear turns at exactly 1 RPM. The easiest way to do this is to mark one of the gear's teeth with a felt pen, and add a small tick mark to the base. Run the motor, and start your stopwatch just as the marked tooth aligns with the tick. After exactly 2 minutes, stop the motor and see where the marked tooth is relative to the index mark. For increased accuracy, let the motor run up to 5 minutes. Adjust the multi-turn potentiometer to speed up or slow down the motor accordingly, and repeat the test until the gear is turning at the correct speed. To take photos with the tracker, you first have to align it with the north celestial pole. For wide angle shots, simply sight along the hinge and aim at Polaris, the north star. If you're using a longer focal length lens, or shooting exposures more than 1-2 to two minutes long, you'll need to be more precise. To accurately position the tracker, we're going to use the viewfinder on the camera. First, we'll need to align it to the hinge's axis of rotation. Sight in a star along the hinge and adjust the camera on the ball mount until the same star is centered in the viewfinder. After the star is centered, swing the hinge through a 180 degree arc and see if the star moves in the viewfinder. If it does, adjust the ball mount and swing the hinge again until the star stays centered through the swing. 
Now that the camera is aligned with the hinge, move the tripod so that Polaris is centered in the viewfinder. Swing the hinge again, and make sure Polaris stays centered. Once you swing the camera through the arc and Polaris doesn't move, you're free to position the ball mount at whatever heavenly body you'd like. We really love the simplicity of this build, especially when you consider the quality of the photos that you get. We've noticed though that it's a little bit difficult to bend that threaded rod and get a consistent curve. So we're reaching out to you. If you have any better ideas about how to bend that threaded rod and get a consistent curve, or if you have an even simpler idea for the entire mechanism, be sure to let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next weekend project. If you liked this video, subscribe to our channel or send us a comment on Facebook or Twitter. Be sure to check out our other project videos or visit us on makezine.com.